Hey guys, Patrick here from Crafted With Machines and I have hopefully another quick tutorial for you guys. And this is for people who have maybe been 3D printing for a while and want to get their toes wet designing for 3D printing. So we're going to work in Autodesk Fusion today and this is going to assume that you have almost no knowledge of Fusion. Maybe you're a beginner, maybe you even haven't even downloaded Fusion yet and you've been interested. This is going to be a great place for you to start designing for 3D printing. So let's jump in. What we're going to design today is going to be a simple cable clip that slides onto the end of your desk uh, to hold USB cables in place. Uh, this can be attached to the front or back of your desk and it's designed to print with no support. So this is going to be a, a cool way to dive into the fundamentals of designing for 3D printing and orienting things so that supports aren't needed when you print it. So let's get started. Once you've got Fusion loaded up, you want to start by creating a new sketch. So to do that, you're going to hit Create in the upper left, and then you're going to hit New Sketch. And I'm going to do this on this face plane here. And now we have our sketch started. All right, so we're going to start by drawing a box. And so for the situation of my desk, I'm going to make this box 1.5 inches wide by 1.4 inches tall. And this is going to be the inside dimensions of this cable clip. And now we'll offset this to create the outside of it, or the starting point, I should say, of the outside. So we'll hit this U-shaped button up here, the offset tool. We'll click on this and we'll start by going out to I'll do 0.175. All right, so now we have a box with a box inside of it. So now we want to start designing the shape of our clip. So there's a lot of ways to do this, but I'm going to show you what I think is the simplest way. So I'm going to add a box here. We'll go point. One, two, five, Ooh, that's the width. We want to go 0.5 for the width and 0.125 for the height. Nope, let's go 0.25. And these are these numbers are fairly arbitrary. This is going to be the part where the cables sit. Um, so as long as you have it thick enough where it's going to hold the cables and have a little extra material beneath it, you're good. And instead of 0.5, I'm going to go 0.75. Hit OK. All right, so now we have these two boxes, and I'm going to draw a line at an angle from the end of this box to the end of this box. And the reason I'm doing this has to do with being able to print this without supports, and this will become clearer when we extrude this into a 3D object. All right, so the next step is I trim these because I like my sketches to be clean. So I'm going to trim these lines that aren't needed for the extrusion. You can leave them here because you can still extrude a complete shape with sketch geometry that you're not going to use. But I just like cleaning it up so that I don't have to look at it. All right, and we're going to do the same thing on this side. But we need some lines here that we can trim through this. So to do that, I'm going to just do a line here and do that here. This will give us the mouth of our clip. So now I'm going to trim these out. And there we have the mouth. And now I'm going to do one other little thing. I'm going to add a little curve to this so that when you're sliding it onto your desk, uh, it pushes the it pushes the clip open a little bit to give a little tension and have it bite on the desk a little bit. So I'm going to do that with a fit point spline. So to do what I want to do, I'll come up 0 0.075, I think will be good. And then we'll select the fit point spline tool, which is this wiggly line up here. We'll click the end of our clamp. We'll click our line and then we'll click here. Actually, I think that's more than I want. So let's and I think it's coming further out than I want. So let's do this. 
And I'm gonna show you an example of dimensioning. So if you hit the D key on your keyboard, you click this line here, and you click the end of this, this allows you to dimension it. So right now we're at 0.375 just about. Uh, I want it closer to the edge now that I was seeing that. So we're gonna go 0.25 and that brings it closer. And in the same instance, we can do this for this line. I want it to be a little shorter. We'll go 0 0.05, shortens our line. That is the beauty of parametric modeling. So now let's select fit point spline again, click our end, click our little spline there, and I'm just going to click right there. And then we'll hit this checkbox to close that tool. Now we can go back to getting rid of this stuff. Once we're done putting our, the dimensions we want on, we can close this out. One thing to note, if you have a blue line, that means that that object is not constrained. If you don't know, since, since this is our, uh, targeted at beginners, if you don't know what constraint you should apply to constrain that sketch line, you can hit automate, and this will do auto constraint and then you can hit OK and it will apply. So right there it wanted the distance from this arc to this line and that was the dimension or constraint it needed to finish this, uh, finish the dimensioning of this sketch. So now we have a red padlock which means this sketch is fully constrained. And that is important later on when you do parametric modeling like if you wanted to change this uh, change the shape of this object after you do a bunch of work you could come back into the sketch and change dimensions and with it being fully constrained it should parametrically change what it needs to change to make that dimension change reflect across the entire object if that makes sense all right so now that we're done we have our sketch constrained let's extrude this out into the object we want so I want this to have six slots for cables, so I'm going to make this two inches wide. All right, and now we have a rough shape of a cable clip that's going to slip onto a desk. So now we need our second sketch. So this is only a two sketch object. So now we will click on this face, we will right click and we'll hit create sketch. And now we are sketching on the face of this. So the largest cable I have is roughly a quarter inch in thickness, um, 0.21 more precisely. So we're going to use that as our, our slot size. So I'm going to start by creating a circle here. And we could put it pretty much anywhere. We're going to use the dimensioning tool to uh, place it exactly where we want it. And I'll go with 0.21. This is just going to account for any thermal expansion that happens when you 3D print. All right, so we've got that there. And I want this to be consistently a quarter inch from the edge to center. So I'll hit D, click the center, and click this line. We'll go with 0.25. All right, so that gives us a quarter inch from the center to the side. So now we're going to create the rest of these remaining circles using the patterning tool. So to do that, we're going to hit create. We're going to hit rectangular pattern. We're going to select our circle, and then we're going to drag it out. But now we only have three. And we want six. So we can change this number here to six. And that gives us our six circles. It looks a little crowded to me, so I'm going to just do five. There we go. That looks a lot cleaner. And then we'll just hit enter. So now what I will do to continue our slots 
is slide this whole thing up a little bit. So to do that, I'm going to do another dimensioning between this and the top line. So we'll hit our circle, we hit this, and so we're at 0.125 approximately right now. We'll go to 0.1, and that moved all of them up since it was a pattern. So next thing I need to do is cut out some of this circle so that it leaves us um, the slots we want. And to do that, I'm going to click the trim tool and trim the top of each of these. All right, let's finish this sketch. And since there wasn't much going on, we don't have to do any additional dimensioning or constraints. We have our red padlock, which means this sketch is constrained as far as um, Fusion is concerned. So let's hit finish sketch and let's click on one of these. Hit E for extrude. You can also hit the extrude tool under create, but the keyboard shortcut works great. And then we'll hold down the shift key. Actually, I lied. You don't need to hold down the shift key if you have the extrude command activated. You can just click on the faces that you intend to extrude. So now since I don't know the exact dimension I want to go, I'll just click the arrow and drag it and visually see it pull out. Okay, so we hit OK. That cut our socket, or that cut our slots out, but as you can see, there's still material that's going to be in the way. We're not going to be able to pop these cables in. So I'm going to try some fillets on each of these corners to see if I can pull it back enough to give myself area to pop a cord in. So to do that, we're gonna hit modify, fill it, and then we'll select each of these lines. Once we have them all selected, we can just grab this arrow and pull it back. So that's 0 0.025. That looks like that there's probably enough room that the cord will pop in there and keep it from easily coming back out. So I'm gonna go with that. I'm not gonna change the sketch at all. I think this is gonna work just fine. So now the last thing we really need to do is purely aesthetic. I'm gonna add fillets to some of these hard lines to make it look a bit cleaner. So we'll select fillet again. You can hit F on your keyboard as well. And I'm going to do this to this, go 0.02, go 0 0.025 to match that top one actually. All right, that gives that a nice look. Let's do this. All right, so I just, I selected the entire body and it provided a fillet to everything, which I think looks good for this. It's very, very basic aesthetic change uh, and it still should print well. Okay, so the reason I had us do this line up to this block was when we print this, we'll print this on this face and having this angle will allow us to print this block that otherwise would be an overhang and would need supporting. It'll allow us to print that without any supports because this angle is such that it can build up without any supporting material. So that'll allow us to print this more quickly and with less material. Now that we have this object, we can click on bodies here. We can right click on it and hit save as mesh. We'll hit OK. We want it to be a 3MF file. And then we'll just call it Cable Clip. And then we'll hop over to Bamboo Studio. 
to show you how to orient it and print it. And if you've been 3D printing for a while, this should be second nature to you, but I'm just going to show you anyway. So we'll bring our object in to Bamboo Studio. And like I said, we want to print it on this face. So we'll just click this, rotate it around. I'm going to print it in green, so I'll change my color and slice the plate. We don't get any warnings that there's any overhang. So yeah, this is ready to print. So let's print it out. And here we have it, our 3D printed cable clip. I've been doing this for a while and it still doesn't get old seeing something go from the screen to physical object. Now that we have this in our hands, let's try it out and see how it fits. So the fit is pretty good. It's a little tighter than I'd like it to be. So if I were to print this again, I would pop back into my Fusion document, go into that sketch and increase the distance between these two lines a little bit, just so it slides on with a little bit of friction, but not so much that it's stressing this joint. Um, one thing about the way we printed this, we avoided having support material, which saved us on material and time, but the layer lines go this way. So there is potential for failure along this joint. I think if we have this size just right, it's a non-issue, especially if we're printing this at a pet G, but I felt like the trade off of having that possible joint failure uh, was worth it to make this print without any supports. And that's going to do it for today's video. If you found value in this and you want to support the channel, head over to our Patreon where this file is going to be available as a ready to print STL and the Fusion file that we created today will be there so you can modify it and use it as a jumping off point for your own creation.